By the way, her tongue didn't stick all the way out of her mouth. Did I ever tell you that? No. Yeah. Her tongue was connected at the bottom, so she couldn't get it out of her mouth. So she had kissed like this. How do you normally kiss? With my tongue out of my mouth. Like, ah. That's how you kiss? Yeah. I go into the mouth. And then what do you do with it? I fucking back it back and forth. Show me. I paint it. Like that? Yeah. I, go, ah, ah. You got I like it. tongue in the mouth. I like tongue in the mouth. Oh, you like the tongue in the oh, mouth? Oh, I like big fat tongue in the mouth. 100%. <laughs> so, uh, I used to wear headphones all the time. <laughs> and then you have guests. And like on your mom's house, we're always playing clips. So I'd be like, yeah. Hey, I throw on your headphones. And you, do you know that like some guests would be like, oh, I'm good. I'm like, well, you won't be able to hear it. And then they're like, okay. And they put it on and they'll like hold it like this, like to their ear. And then they go down. I go, hey man, that's not the last clip. Like there's more clips coming. And he's like, and then they'll put it on for a second and be like, yeah, I saw it. I'm like, just put them on. What's the fucking problem? <laughs> do you want to hear the dumbest thing I've ever done? What? I'm doing, uh, I, I, honestly, I hate to say it now because I didn't know it then, but I was doing Fox News. <laughs> For to promote some travel channel, you show. didn't know you were doing it. Well, I mean, I didn't know what it was. <laughs> oh. I, like, uh, like now you say Fox News, and everyone's like, "Oh, for real? Did you wear a hood?" And but, uh, <laughs> but I was doing Fox, and it was the first time they ever sprinkled my hair in. You know, oh, the lady little, goes, little. "Hey, you want to sprinkle your hair in?" And I was like, "Huh?" She goes, "I do it to what's the guy Glenn Beck?" She goes, "I do it to Glenn Beck. It looks good. Trust me, you have some holes in your hair. It'll fill it out." So yeah. I was like, "Sure." She did it, and I was so obsessed with my hair, looking at it in the TV, like looking at myself on screen. Like I always do. If I'm on screen, I'll look at myself. That I was, I didn't do the sound check. And so we put in headsets and I didn't pay attention to the sound check. I was like, yeah, I'm good. But I didn't know that there was a reverb in me. So the guy says, hey, Bert, so tell us about the, for the new season of Trip Flip. And I'm like, well, and as I go to talk, my voice is a second behind my voice in my headsets. Uh -huh. So it's like, well, well, I, 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 can, can, can. And I'm like, so distracted. It's so like a fucking idiot. I really casually take the headsets out, right? So I don't yeah. hear it. Yeah. I then also don't hear his question because he is via satellite from somewhere else. So you're just like, <laughs> I'm just like, what's so that? I answer it perfectly and I'm like, and I can't wait for the next season. And I sit there and I'm like, oh my God, he's probably talking in those headsets. <laughs> so I grab it and I hear the last word he says and he's like, a lot of fun, right? And I was like, a lot of fun. It's so much fun. <laughs> I did, uh, I did, I had a sinus infection and did radio. Yeah. And it was one of those morning stations where they're just like, you know, you're, you're in and then the guy who's working the other clubs coming in. Right. So you're in there for like 20, 30 minutes. So I had a sinus infection and I was so plugged up that like I couldn't breathe and I couldn't hear. So I, I couldn't hear a thing because my ears were completely just plugged do, up. Do you remember when you ruptured an ear on a plane? No, I didn't. I didn't rupture an ear on a plane, but my doctor told me. You if you could. fly, yeah, 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 yeah. you're okay, going to rupture going, your keep eardrum. Going, keep going. And the same doctor, when I said, well, what can I do? He goes, sit on the left window. And I was like, why? He goes, because your left ear is super plugged up. So if your eardrum ruptures, it'll go all over the window. And I was like, what the fuck? That was his advice. Can you imagine sitting next to someone and having their ear ruptured on the side of your face? Oh, my God. And just being like. Uh, what was that? Did you sneeze? Oh my! And the God. guy's like, "Sorry, it's my ear." Keep going. So, I see. Um, I'm in, I'm in this radio station, and I and I know I'm sick, and you know I tell them I'm not feeling. They're like, "All right, sit here, put these headphones on." I put them on, and there's you know different people talking. I can't hear it, so I crank it all the way up. But that just sounds normal to me. That's yeah. how plugged up they are. Well, as I'm leaving, another guy sits down, and he. Uh, he goes, whoa. <laughs> they start talking to him. <laughs> he does a, a segment and then he sees me like in the in the break room. He goes, Hey man, uh, you have hearing problems? And I go, What? He goes, You have hearing problems? And I go, No. And he goes, I just sat in your chair after you left. And that was the loudest setting I've ever like that doesn't hurt your ears. And I was like, Oh, I can't hear. <laughs> right now but normally i can only thing i've ever had similar to that is i walked in i did radio with zane lamprey mm -hmm. and i was fucking day drinking like early morning he called me at like 10 he was like i'm doing 24 hours straight come over and have beers with me and i was like great i skateboarded over to his studio dude he had the sickest setup he had this back before anyone had studios and offices he had the sickest setup and it was like at a bar and it was so much fun. I got fucking wasted and I was like, I gotta go pick up my kids. I'll be back. And I come back and 
a new guy is sitting where at the mic I was at, mm-hmm. and they're just like, dude, what the fuck, man? Who shit on this mic? And they're like, I have no idea. It smells like shit. Bert, smell it. And I'm like, it doesn't smell, it doesn't smell bad at all. And they're <laughs> like, know, and they're then like, all those, one of the guys like, I think it was Bert's breath. <laughs> oh, my God. Because <laughs> you're drinking beers. It's the morning. Oh, yeah. I didn't brush my teeth. I smoked a cigar. Oh, my God. I smoked a cigar. You know what I did last night? I went for my jog. I did a two-mile jog because I had to get to five and a half miles. I did a two-mile jog, and I brought a cigar with me. And I just jogged out two miles. And then I lit a cigar and walked home, and it was fucking awesome. <laughs> so psychotic. That is, it was such a great treat. It was an original thought. It was an original. Thought. It was an original. Thought. Bring cigars with you, dude. I wanted to. I wish I was boozing hard. I wish I could. You know, I drank. I drank a uh, Saturday night. Okay. Saturday night. Hey, we that, went, that's believable. Keep yeah, going. Saturday night, I drank uh, some like beers, but it it wasn't fun. Like it wasn't, so I didn't drink when quarantine st- started. I didn't drink for like sixty days, right? And I didn't lose any weight, but I didn't drink for like sixty days, maybe less than that, maybe like 45, 50. 30. No, definitely over thirty, but okay. I don't. But maybe forty-five in a row. Yeah, 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 yeah. When I, when quarantine started. Okay. And so March, April. Yeah, and then I had my first buzz, and it was a beer buzz in my back in the new house in the backyard during sunset. And it was the greatest buzz I've ever had. And I had all these realizations of why I'd never quit drinking. Because I was like, if you quit drinking, if you go, I have a problem, I'm going to quit drinking. Then, then you don't get this feeling. Then you don't get this feeling. That feeling's filled with shame. You're yeah. like, oh, I fucked up. I really fucked up. So I said, I'm never going to quit drinking, but I'm going to do these. I'm going to do these where runs where I don't drink for a while and then I drink because this buzz is the best. It's a brand new buzz. It's a brand new buzz. So that's a really inspiring take on reason, a great reason not to drink <laughs> so i haven't drank since new year's eve right so, yeah. so with you i didn't drink new year's eve and then i'm um, it's the eight 17th or whatever 16th so 15 for 15 16 days and uh and i well, i go up to watch the sunset and i bring two beers and i drink them fast so it hits me <sighs> nothing happened oh and i was like eh. and then i was like and then, you know, for me, and I don't know one, I'm curious. I'm curious a lot of things that people are think the way I do. For me, I can tell the beer buzz is over, the enjoyable is over, when I get on my phone and I just start searching things. And that I'm is, like, by the way, this thing is killing me. It, it is to the detriment of, I think, all my happiness. How do these people, I so admire people that aren't really into social media even though it benefits me if they are i i actually you know what i mean like yeah. like i meet people and they're like oh, i don't have a thing you're like how do you how how did you avoid it? like i feel like we have to have it because of our, our jobs it's our, our business. business but man that I, I hate that i am in that cycle of i open it and i check an email i check emails are there any emails it's funny emails no. is one of the last things i check yeah that's yeah but it's like emails texts and then it goes like Twitter, Instagram. I never check Facebook. I don't. I haven't checked Facebook in. I, I, I take that. I, I got. I'm lying. I was on Facebook last night for the first time, and I had to get my password, reset my password because I didn't know it. And I had. To, and I don't even have it on my phone anymore. I had to do it online. I had to do it on Safari. Yeah. And so I, I logged into Facebook for the first time, and then immediately got sucked in. Like shit. God damn it! The one that sucks me in the most is Instagram. I think oh, because I, I love so and fucking, I love the form. I love you know it's photos, it's videos. So wait, we've ta- we never really talked about this. So I'm curious, what does your search show up? Because all mine is is Puerto Ricans getting their hair cut. What? That's all. All I have is Puerto Ricans getting their hair cut. <laughs> That's like you mean every like- fucking picture. <laughs> Every time, every fucking picture is some Puerto that's Rican like getting your, their hair cut. That's your... Like, and I'm fucking obsessed with it. That's like your home... Okay. When, I'll, when I'll I go you. to my searches, Puerto I'll Ricans getting mind. their hair cut, okay? Uh, g- people grilling meat, people grilling meat, and golf shots. Oh, and uh, boats capsizing. Yep. Um. Okay, so... I understand the golf because... Uh, because of um, I did that I did that golf show with uh, with fucking um, Michael Collins. <clears throat> I think Michael Collins is his name. Michael Collins is, is uh, I'm, I'm 
am I drawing a blank right now? Michael Collins is like the, can you Google it? Michael Collins, uh, America's caddy. I think it's, I'm almost 100% certain it's Michael Collins. Michael Collins turned me on to, uh, yeah, Michael Collins. I did that show with him and then he turned me on to, uh, Bryson DeChambeau, uh, a bu- yeah. <clears throat> and, and a bunch of, uh, golfers. So yeah. I got really into like watching great golf shots. Yeah. And like this chunk it is like a thing. So I can understand golf. I don't know why. And by the way, I love watching Puerto Ricans getting their hair cut. Yeah. No. Yeah. I They're love great. it. I love it like so much. Cause I love when they come in looking like fucking werewolves and then they're like, Oh, I got to cut some those bangs li- on they, this they, fucking the guy. The lines are so defined and clean. God, I know it's it. good. It's a good OCD thing for sure. Is that what it is? Do you, have you watched it too? I've seen, I've seen a bunch of hair. Barber stuff is great. I, I've watched it a bunch. Bro, when mine bring... is like, looks like it's uh it's a lot of cars, like oh, car stuff. Any cars. Oh yeah. Cars, uh, some basketball stuff. Uh, yeah, by the way. <laughs> That's ironic. Yeah, a lot of basketball stuff. Um, some football. Yeah, it's like, it's basically all that. Mine's a lot of grilled meats and uh, and like anything grilled. And then surfing. Apparently, there was uh, the biggest waves to ever hit Hawaii were this week. Really? Yeah. And so I've been Those watching. Those have to be unbelievable. Bro. Pull up uh, Nathan Florence Instagram. Where do you see this guy that is? Uh, I don't know how these guys. Is this guy like? No, this is this it? is a guy. <clears throat> so I wish I had all the names. Nathan's oh my friend. God. Go to go to the one at far 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 right far right. Yeah, yeah, that one. Take a look at this guy. He is. Look at this. And good night, Irene. Oh and then he comes God. over the falls. Oh my God! <laughs> Can you imagine? How long that? do you think? How long do you think you would have to train to be able to attempt to do that? Like if you're like I want to do, you know, I've been thinking about. But I think that. you'd have to do year like years oh. of like baby waves, right? It's years. So funny you say that. I actually I've been texting or DMing with that with Nathan Florence, and he's always like, "Yeah, man, get out here. We'll get you on some waves." And I'm always like, I I really do believe I could be towed into a big wave right now, and but get in and get out, not fucking get into the into the, like the the barrel. Yeah, but I think I could be towed into a big wave. Mm-hmm. And I probably would stay longer than I need to because I I can definitely no, you, wakeboard. You, you would stay a lot longer than you need to because the wave <laughs> would dictate that. <laughs> and uh, I will send a an entire production crew if you're willing to go. I'm there. willing to do that. Nathan, hit me up, dude. Kai Lenny, I think that's his name. K A I, I think I'm. Kai, yeah, go go to his Instagram. Wait, do you see the wee waves this motherfucker caught? This guy had the oh best my look, God. dude. This guy, and I'm I don't know, I don't know him. I don't only know, I don't really even know any How? of these guys. Look How? at this, look at this, look at this. This is look at this fucking guy. He had the best weekend of waves. He is in every video I've seen. And this guy charged it so fucking hard all week. And I've I must have watched a million videos of him. Look at him still on that wave. And then he bails out there. Here's what I'm obsessed with. He bailed out there and waves are still going to be breaking right there because that's where that wave is breaking. Dude, hit another one of his videos. This guy is a fucking, look at, I mean, just absolutely fearless. Yeah. Oh, yeah. He's getting towed in, right? Yeah. Fucking A, man. Dude, there's one video that I watched. I don't know. Like, I don't really know who's I'm watching. I'm just watching these. I get, by the way, if you can make your living doing this. This has to be the greatest I wonder life. How much they make. I don't know, but I mean, he's gets you get sponsors, you you they compete in events, but just let's just say you're making a good living, and you're like, what do you do? I surf for a living. See the real, <clears throat> unbelievable. The, it, it, these guys, you know, I follow. So Nathan has a vlog. This guy Jamie O'Brien had a has a vlog. What's he's this guy? Like, this is Kai. Kai Lenny. Okay. I think I hope I'm saying your name right. I'm sorry if you're watching this, but. This guy had the best week in Hawaii because every video you saw, he was in it. He was in every one. And he was like, I mean, everything I clicked on, he was in. Mm. And and so this guy, this is how it breaks down, okay? Let's do a deep dive on this. Because this, I would be curious to watch a documentary on this. On what? On vlogging. Because, you know, for me, the first person I ever, ever saw in a vlog was this guy, Mr. Ben Brown. Mr. Mm-hmm. Ben Brown was this uh, uh, British guy who lived in South America, South Africa, 
and just had a blog and he was just a really great photographer. And then I found Casey Neistat. You know who Casey Neistat is, right? Yeah. Casey Neistat was... He's got a huge YouTube presence. Huge. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, yeah. Casey Neistat's fucking impressive. What's interesting, I'd say this to Casey, and I hope this doesn't come out shitty, but like, I think he'd say it, is the vlog kind of cannibalized his life a little bit. And, th- and I, he, I started vlogging because of him. But you would see... And you couldn't, there was no, there was no like temperature to take for him to like judge how far, how close to get to the flame or not to get to the flame. You know what I mean? Yeah. So like he was getting recognized by like everyone in New York and he was loving it. But in a weird way, the vlog became more about like, more about watching someone get famous. If you like, cause he like signed a deal with CNN and then he started a, a podcasting company. So it was almost like watching a guy blow up was what the vlog was about. Yeah. Whereas when, originally when I found it, it was about watching him organize his office. Dude, this guy watching him organize his office is one of the most engaging videos I've ever seen in my life. More so than half the shit I've seen on Netflix. It is was fucking amazing. And then you start getting these surfers like Jamie O'Brien, Nathan Florence, all his friends. They all have vlogs now. and But it's, it's, it, it's seamless because these are guys who are recording themselves every day doing some of the most crazy insane shit that i want to see charging fucking 40 foot waves out in the ocean like i've watched this guy nathan florence just simply paddle out yeah and i'm smiling because he is smiling like paddling out at ymea just he's smiling doing it and then i'm watching him all i'm seeing is the camera from the marmon board and i'm smiling i'm going oh, it's gonna be a fun day i'm not surfing the fucking waves right but you're that I'm excited like, oh. i mean he got Flipped, he, he was like, oh, watch me get caught inside, which is like a bunch of waves are breaking and you're caught in the inside. And he was like, I ended up holding my breath. Like, I'm like going, like, what the fuck? It's so, I, I mean, I'm, I'm obsessed with it. Yeah. But it's, but it's very natural. And I, and to make a very long story short, I will move to Hawaii for a month. Mm-hmm. I will train with them and I will charge. I will be towed into a big wave. A hundred percent. And you think this is going to happen when? I, March. That's really soon. I could do it March. I guess, well, I'll be, I'll be probably 215 pounds. Yeah? I'm, Are you going to get to 215? I'm trying. I'm better. Dude, I have definitely hit a fucking... Like, apparently, I've gotten rid of all the alcoholic bloat weight. And by the way, I'd like to say, if we're going to get rid of words, if you don't like being called what you don't like being called, I don't like being called an alcoholic. I like that. Okay, but yeah, you alcoholics you, a fucking finger pointy word. Yeah, where it's like you don't have control of everything. Yeah, you. Have, but I uh, do. So don't call me that word. How you like okay, that? Okay. How about that? Call me the a word. Or no, don't even call me the a word. Don't even. But to me. be to be fair, yeah, you said I just got rid of the alcoholic bloat. Oh yeah, I was saying that. But I can say that about myself. Okay. The All way. Right. Uh, I know what you're saying. Okay. So <laughs> by the way, <laughs> we don't have to get into it. Uh, <laughs> Uh, but I think I think if I okay, do you like my tracksuit, bruv? <sighs> I almost texted you. I was certain, certain when I saw this, I was like, he's gonna show up in his tracksuit, so I'm gonna show up in the tracksuit. I was. I was so certain you would show up in it. I didn't know that you got expedited shipping on yours, but you ha- you had yours too. I got mine. I got mine, but I didn't. I was going to hold on to it because I was like, maybe we'll, he wants to save it I thought for a this, special day. I did, where, did you see where yours came from? England. Oh, not mine. Where's yours come from? Ukraine. Wait, did mine not come from the Ukraine too? I don't fucking know. <clears throat> oh, I don't know. Sewing Brothers is in England, right? That's what it says, but the I'm sorry, I'm saying the packet. Like, so I oh, see a package I did not and see I'm, where like, my package came I'm from. like, what did I get from the Ukraine? And it was shoved into a box like they were fucking shipping people. Yeah. Here's the thing. So I see the Ukraine and then I open it and I just see a little bit of fabric and I'm like, what's in here? What the fuck is in here? Like I thought something was going to be wrapped like a hand, you know, was going to be wrapped in a, like a, like a blanket or something. Yeah. Yeah. It freaked me out. And then, and then I was like, oh yeah, the track. And I go, Bert's definitely going to show up in his tracksuit. So I'm not going to say anything. I'll show up in the tracksuit. Fuck. I got mine. I got mine up and immediately put it on. Yeah. It is so it's so well made, right? Yeah, it's great. It's is such. It, is it the same one? Exact same. Exact ah, same. Damn it! <laughs> exact same. How did you not wear it? I today? didn't. Th- you know, I almost put it on, and then I thought, I don't want to spoil it because if I go and I, I like that's definitely my personality is to steal the thunder from a joke yeah. and be like, oh, I'll own this. 
and I was if like, there, if there's anything I was certain of is that you would be wearing this today. <laughs> I swear to you, I would have bet my life on it. God damn it. Um, real quick before we get any further, it's moving. It's out there. Oh, we are watching the big game, the final NFL game of the season, February 7th, 3 p.m. Pacific, 6 p.m. Eastern. That's before kickoff. Uh, it's going to be Burt Kreischer, myself, and Hall of Famer Warren Sapp. He'll be here in studio with us. We're going to watch the entire game. We're going to drink, smoke, eat great food. We have some prepackaged stuff that we're shooting. Ooh, it's I have some be ideas too. Oh, good. I good. have a lot of ideas. Hey, here's the deal. If you're not into football and you're like, this might not be for me, uh, don't worry. Me Bert's, either. Bert's here. Don't yeah. worry. <laughs> it's going to be fun. I want to find out. I want to find Every out. Every time I ask Warren a football question, Bird would be like, do you, do you ever think about like, what, like how come some guys' dicks are small in the locker room? And then he'll be like, what? And then you'll have a good time. I want to, I want to ask Warren who the most unintelligent person he ever played with is. Oh, he'll probably Like the lowest IQ. And then I want to go through a list of people he played with. And I want him to guess their IQs. And then we'll see if we like put them on a scale. Here's the other question I was thinking. This could be a fun game for me and you right now. Yeah. Let's go through football players okay. that got fucked by by signing with the team because they shouldn't have lived in that city. Like, I'm going to say this. <clears throat> Brett Favre might have been the perfect guy to go to Wisconsin, even though he's a Southern guy and you think maybe he would have been great for the Saints. For some reason, branding-wise, he was perfect to go there. Yeah, right? right. Tom Brady uh, was was great in New England, but, but he could have been better somewhere else. You know, like... Right. Perfect example, Randy Moss got fucked by going to the fucking Vikings. Randy Moss's personality should have been somewhere better. It was like the Vikings were like, you know, he just, he was he was always a fish out of water there. It wasn't right. like home to him. Right. He's a West Virginia guy. And he has like, I mean, he even, he speaks with like a Southern draw. Like but he, he loves of, hunting and fishing. That's what I'm saying. So yeah. like Southern, Southern <clears throat> cities would have been better. Like Titans or Titans something. Titans would have yeah. been great for Randy Moss. You yeah. know, he would have loved. Cause, and then also think like, uh, like I was trying to think like, cause Philip Rivers just retired today. Right. Yeah. yeah. And, and I was like, I was like, you know, he kind of, I always thought he was perfect for San Diego. And then someone's like, oh, you know, he's a redneck. And I was Who? like, Philip Rivers. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. And I was like, oh, shut up. So he didn't belong. You know what it is? It's Jerry Maguire. It's, it, you know what it is? It's Bill. Uh, who's the guy played for the Bills? Jim Kelly. Jim, Jim Kelly. Kelly was like, fuck that. By the way, almost everybody that goes to Buffalo is like, fuck that. <laughs> <laughs> they, that town so embraces all their sports <laughs> and their players. And like, you play for the team. They embrace you for every, every fucking guy that goes there is like, I got to get the fuck out of here. What's great is they <laughs> loved Jim Kelly after he was like, fuck that. I'm not going there. Yeah. And then they, he came in with sloppy seconds. Like, I guess the XFL is, uh, or the USFL is done. So yeah. I'll play for you guys. And they're like, we love you. I mean, I, I remember Willis McGahee being like, man, this place is it's cold and shit to do. <laughs> like, like, do you think Warren was perfect playing for Tampa or do you think he would have made a better dolphin? Oh, that's a good question. I think it was pretty perfect in Tampa. I mean, he was too. He loves fishing. Yeah, he, he loves the he's outdoors. Outdoorsman. Yeah, I mean, it's a great and and it's home for him. He's he's a Florida guy. So. Troy Aikman, perfect cowboy. That's a good one, right? Yep. Okay. Yep. Perfect cowboy. So uh, let's take let's take a Hall of Famer. Give me a list of Hall of Fame. Uh, oh, by the way, we didn't mention the, the, the URL for the show. Oh, the URL's changed. It's livestream.ymhstudios.com. Livestream.ymhstudios.com. Tickets are on sale. You can also go to our bios, Instagram. You can go to our stories, swipe up. We have the ticket and everything. Everything's up there. It's going to be super fun. Yes. Super, super fun. It's gonna and it's going to be, I literally, I have been. I have been talking to catering companies about like catering oh event. can i tell you i actually wanted to do a, a cooking segment a, on like show? a mashup of something's burning oh okay and do and and do like the big game nachos oh perfect or something like that that's I'll a good idea that we i think it's going to be a fun time and i'm going to get fucking wasted because i haven't drank i will have only drank one i'm gonna drink for winston churchill day this sunday okay but uh i've been barely drinking here's my question and you really uh, it is is the goal you want to see two one five on the scale? That's like where we're headed. I want to see two one five. That'd be fucking amazing. Yeah. To perform at your best, you need to feel your best from head to toe. 
Features has solely focused on engineering innovative, high-performance socks for almost 20 years. I didn't even realize they've been around that long. They created a sock with a custom-like fit to prevent the issues with conventional socks. No more bunching, slipping, friction, and blisters. I got to tell you, custom-made is exactly what features feel like. They feel like you have bespoke socks on. There's no, like, it just, it's compressed exactly where it needs to be compressed. It fits great. Like, it doesn't slide off. It doesn't have, like, something, like, bunching up on your toes. It's absolutely amazing. Um, they're especially great for like you're going for a workout, going for a run. I fucking love their socks. I fucking love their socks. They're amazing. And I ran a thousand miles last year and I'm on track to run 2,000 miles this year. <laughs> CY Features has quickly become the number one running sock in America. For listeners of Two Bears, One Cave, you can receive $10 off your first pair of features when you go to features.com slash cave. That's F E E T U R E S dot com slash cave for $10 off your first pair of features. Do you really know what's in your multivitamin? I take multivitamins all the time. Sugars, GMOs, synthetic fillers, artificial colorants, not to mention byproducts like sheep's wool, gelatin from hooves and hides. What the fuck? These are all ingredients you might find in your multivitamin, but not in Ritual. Ritual isn't your typical multivitamin. Ritual is clean, vegan-friendly, and made with key ingredients, nutrients to form in forms that your body can actually use. No shady ingredients. Let me tell you what I, I take multivitamins mon, nonstop. I, especially with all the touring I've been doing and all the stuff going on in our world right now, I've been loaded up. I called Rogan one time. He's like, those are horse shit. Here's what I love. Ritual is a multivitamin reimagined. It's formulated with key ingredients, including in vitamin D, which we all need. It's made traceable. So you always know where the ingredients or the nutrients come from. Thanks to Ritual's one of a kind visible supply chain it's designed with different life stages in mind for men women teens my age my wife's age and it makes healthy habits easy you deserve to know what's in your multivitamin that's why ritual is offering our listeners 10 percent off your first three months visit ritual.com slash bears to start your ritual today but you know what i had a full blown do you when you have a cheat day where you go like oh, how many like yesterday four Krispy Kreme donuts yeah. a cheeseburger like I just fucking went ham. Mm -hmm. Do you gain like five pounds? I mean, you can. Okay, okay, yeah. okay. Because yeah. I have a list of things that I wonder what regular people do. Yeah, versus like what? what like go ham like, on some. Let's start with waking cheat up. Meal? Okay, when you wake up as a regular person, like yeah. no booze whatsoever. Do you, does it take you a little bit to wake up? I'm a very slow riser. Oh, God damn it. I thought I had fucking Alzheimer's I, or something. The only time I ever, like, shoot up out of bed is for a flight. Like, I, when I get, like, nervous, I get, like, anxiety about the flight. Yeah. So, you know, especially if they're like, Carl, will be there at 5 a.m. or something. I'm like, all right. And then when I hear that go off, I'm just like, I sit up and I, I get ready to go. But on a regular day, like today, yeah, man, it's it's slow. I always wake up. I slow. mean, I, I didn't, because when I'm drinking, I think my wake up is a little more panicked. Where yeah. I go, let's get the fuck out of bed, asshole. Because you were drinking? Because I was drinking. I'm a little punitive. So I wake up and I'm like, hey, man, you wanted to go hard last night? You went hard, but you're getting up now. We're getting on the treadmill. Man, I got, I was in bed today and I'm just like, fell back asleep and then opened my eyes. All of a sudden it's 830. I'm supposed wow. to be on the treadmill at eight. And I'm like, fuck. Wait, so when do your eyes open? Eight? I, like, for at eight o'clock, I started like. When do you go to sleep? About last night. Oh, I can tell you by my whoop. Okay, tell and me. By the way, hey whoop, let's uh make a thing where I can change the sleep because I sometimes it tells me I got no sleep. I'm like I had a great night's sleep. Mm. I'd like to like last night forty two percent. That's what they're saying. Bullshit. I slept eight and a half hours. God. I went to bed at. Where does it tell you where you go to bed? It'll tell you. If you look in sleep, it'll you know show you when it started, when it ended. Time in bed, right? Nine hours in bed. So and like how I much was, time of sleep? Uh, eight hours and twenty-two minutes. So you went to bed like just before midnight, like eleven forty. I went to bed probably like eleven thirty. I've been listening. I've been really obsessed with uh, the with history lately. Mm -hmm. We'll talk about that in a second. I like that you referred me to the Dictators podcast, it's which is really good. So fucking good. really good. It's so, dude, let's talk about history in a second. Let's get back to what regular people do. Okay. So, so 
so waking up takes a while. Like you get up and then all of a sudden it's like, you're like, I'm not going to be able to work out today. Like I am fucking still asleep. Do you do this where I tell myself when I wake up, resist sucking cock today, <laughs> resist sucking cocks today, resist the, like the urge to check your phone immediately. Oh, oh, oh. Because I'll, I'll instinctively do it. But then sometimes I'll tell myself even just, can you wait two minutes just to like, you know, be present in the room. Uh, I, uh, I, I, one, I actually noted one of the most depressing things in the world is waking up, not realizing you're kind of getting on your phone. And then Instagram goes, you've been on your phone for, you've been on Instagram for 30 minutes. And you're like, it says what? that it's, I have an alert that says you've been on for 30 minutes. And I'm like, what the fuck? And I don't even cut Puerto Rican guys' hair. Yeah. I really think I could cut a Puerto Rican guy's hair. I think the amount of videos you watch now. I've almost, I'm almost certain I could cut a Puerto Rican. I'm almost, I'd actually bet money I could cut a Puerto Rican guy's hair better than a Puerto Rican guy. The average Puerto Rican guy could cut a Puerto Rican guy's hair. Well, you, I, I know you And by say, the way, I don't know if sure these guys are all Puerto Rican. I'm just keep saying they're I Puerto can Rican. tell you for sure they're not. They're not? They're not all Puerto Rican. But well. It it is it does paint a picture when you say it. So Send think, me to East Harlem. I guarantee you, <laughs> Spanish Harlem. I will fuck up dudes' hair. I could set up shop right now and know how to cut hair and and put like fucking designs in it. Mm -hmm. Um, the <laughs> what's another normal person thing that you're worried okay. about? Okay, so last night it's windy. Was yep. windy where you were? Yes. Does do normal people go? Do their heart skip a beat and they go, oh, we should get fucking hammered right now. Like just every time the wind blows. I don't think so. I don't think so. But some people will say that they feel that way. But I don't think most people feel that way. And then what's, hey, write down Ryan Sickler in there too. And then what's the difference between that and what makes someone broken with like, because like I'm trying to judge like, is it normal? Because it's like beautiful. It's windy. And then I go, oh. Cigar and a cocktail would be nice right now. That's not a cocktail. And then I go, uh, you don't want to, you want to work out tomorrow. You want to feel healthy tomorrow. Don't drink. And then I was like, go for a jog and get a cigar. And then I was like, go for a jog. And then I was like, you know, we can't really jog with a cocktail. And then, so then I did the jog and the cigar. But do you, how often do you think about having a drink or getting high or trying a drug like throughout the day? Um, I do think about eating an edible every evening. Okay. And then I do. <laughs> hey, uh, do you but wake I don't up, do the hangover after an edible. No, you don't wake up. You just it just puts you to sleep. Yeah, fuck. It just helps. I've upped my doses. Really? Yeah. I might try on Sunday. I'm gonna drink in the morning, and then I'm gonna try to get on the treadmill that that day, and then I might try an edible Sunday evening. It's good. I'm gonna do the kind Christina does because I don't like. I think yours would make me fucking tremble. No, no, no. No, they won't. You just have an indica if you're trying to go to sleep. Yeah, trying to go to sleep. Just have a, an indica. It's just, it, it, but here's the thing is if I find out I like it, you know I'm going to do it like crazy. So what? I do it every day. Is that not, is, is that fine for you? I mean, I do it like I, I, I go, okay, everything's done. I'm going to get in bed, watch TV a little bit, and I want to go to sleep in a couple hours. So I do it then. See, I, I, I can, I will, even with Xanax, I fight that feeling. Like yeah. I, the other night I had, um, I, the, so I drank Saturday night, Sunday, I just feel off, like just feel off. And then my anxiety kicks in in a weird way where I go, okay, I probably got a fucking coronavirus. Um, I, my legs kind of hurt cause I was, and, uh, because I'd run eight miles a day before I had slept good. My legs hurt. My back hurt. I just didn't feel right. And I was, and I was hung over. I was hung over. And I go, take a Xanax and this will all go away. And then I fight with myself. And I go, don't take a Xanax. Don't need a Xanax to feel better. Sit and wallow in the fucking misery and go to sleep. Like, and then I am fighting with myself all night long. Do you think regular people do that or they yes, just go? I think that's very common. Really? Yeah, I think it's very common. And I think your instinct to not uh, indulge in it is a good one. Because you're basically then just feeling the feeling. And the feeling yeah. will end. Right? Yeah. Yeah. Well, I think it's a very normal normal thing that you're thinking and feeling i'm curious i would love to know i would love to do have an app that i i could that was just on my phone right and every time i thought about drinking i touched it right yeah and then to see how many times a day i think about drinking and how often do you think about drinking a lot you do a lot i think about it a lot 
Like I think about, I think like about, having a drink. Yeah, because and I'll tell you why, and it and it fades the longer I don't drink. Yes, I would get depressed. <laughs> this sounds almost psychotic. Okay, I get depressed if I have stuff to do to do during the day because mm-hmm. I don't have the possibility of just getting wasted whenever I want. This happens regularly. This happens like when we're on tour, yeah. and I have shows that night. I almost sometimes in the middle of the day I get depressed knowing that I have something to do at the end of the night and I can't drink until the end of the night. I've got to get my work done. Yeah. I will get depressed. Like I will, I'll go like not for the whole day, but I'll have like a, a pit in my stomach for a second where I'll go, you can't get wasted. You have to work today. Like that, that doesn't bum you out. Yeah. I want to get rid of it. Oh, you do want to get rid of it. Yeah. But, but I, it, 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 the, the further away from drinking I get, the less it happens. Right. Because I just go, I don't, I just got to get shit done tonight. But, but when I'm in the throes of partying. And, and the biggest trap is touring, I think, right? When there is no better feeling in the world than knowing you have nothing to do that day. Yeah. You wake up on the bus, you're going to a lake, you're going to take the boat out, and someone's lit a joint or someone has already opened a beer and it's like fucking 10 in the morning. And you're like, ah, like that. I love the touring where it's, Saturday night and the shows are over and you know that the next day you don't have to get up early. So you're like, like the night is, is, is free. It's yours. And full night. Yeah. You have a full night. You're not going to get up at six to catch a flight and you go, and guess what? There's like a great bar across the street from the hotel or whatever. And you're like, now I, now that's an enjoyable experience to me. I got, I got, melancholy last night god i can't wait to go on tour i oh thinking about getting on tour tom about going on tour i got melancholy about my i someone sent me because cody rhodes got a tour bus and people started tagging me and you and like and like different tour, tour bus, bus ideas. champs and so i got melancholy at my first tour bus and just the feeling of getting off stage and going to a bar and walking in and there being like 500 people there and being like yeah and yeah. everyone be like you want a drink i'm like fuck yeah like that yeah. and then being like i'm done getting on the tour bus and driving the next city i miss touring so much i so i much. i've like i mean i've talked about it some but i miss it more than i've articulated you oh know? it's been just, over I've, a year for you like touring i mean i, I did do um okc and huntsville the last couple of months like club shows yeah and I have, I'm going back on the road next month and I have club dates throughout, through June, I think. I'm supposed to go like on tour tour late August or September, you know, if things, I don't know what, what's going to happen. Yeah. But sometimes I'll think about being on tour and it's like a fantasy. Like I escape and start smile. Like I'll, it's like a full fantasy where I'm like, I can't wait. I can't wait to get back. I... And it's people, t- or, you know what else happens? People tag me. Uh, I'm sure it happens to you too on this date like a year oh or two ago. Oh my god. And you're like, "Oh yeah, that was like Toronto or that was, you know, that was a uh, uh, All right. whatever. What Jersey. cities? What cities? And not not to slight cities that you're what if you could do like a three city tour, four city tour in the in America where you got and like I'm just saying you don't get like the runs would be like Orlando, Miami, Tampa, the runs, uh, Atlanta, yeah. Mississippi. I'll, I'll give you a, a couple uh, options, okay? Oh, I know where I would pick. Okay, go. If I was picking like a three city run, three city run right now. Oh, oh, would, oh, oh hold on, I, hold on. I would do Madison, Milwaukee, Chicago. Oh wow, that's I love that run. One. That's a great run. Yeah, Chicago Theater. Yeah, and then and Milwaukee, the Riverside, and and Madison. I think the Orpheum or something like that. Can I tell you one of my favorite runs ever? Yeah, ever. Portland, Seattle. Vancouver. Vancouver. It's the best. The po- best. I'll tell you what I do. Portland, Seattle, Calgary, Vancouver. Because I love that ride through the Rockies. Yeah, the that Northwest, that is one of my favorite three city runs. Three si- yeah. Portland, Seattle, Vancouver. Portland Seattle, Portland, Seattle, Vancouver is a gluttonous three city run because you're it's not that far between each. And they are such amazing cities. All right, hold on, hold on. Let's now let's I'll tell you my my favorite mid. My, yeah. Anything including Indianapolis. You want Indy. Indy is it, just any of those little chunks. Mm-hmm. Indy can get folded into so many little of those little like 
runs. Yeah. And they all, always, Indy always had like a snowstorm show up. Mm -hmm. I have, I have some very fond mem memories of Indianapolis. Florida is always a fun. I don't think I've done a Florida run. Really? I did one Florida. I've only done one Florida run. It was like Tampa, Orlando, Fort Lauderdale. Oh, really? Yeah, that's uh, I Tam like no that. Tampa. You're right. Tampa, Orlando, Jacksonville, or something. No, no, no. Uh, oh, maybe I've done a couple. Pensacola. Yeah, Jacksonville, Orlando, Tampa. Yeah. That's a good one too. Yeah, I miss it, man. I really miss it a lot. I can't wait. I cannot wait to go back. No, it's gonna be so much fun. It feel it actually feels like like I've been. Uh, kept from my life like my normal life so i'm like i'm looking for it's like getting out of prison or something you know you're like i i want to i want to be allowed to go back to what i want to do oh uh, i want to do everything's like a placeholder i would like to do um i want to do some clubs to get even though i'm like i i start i i have a new hour but I'm, i want it to be better like yeah. i want to just scrap it build a new hour and then take those one hour i have and then fold it in yeah. and make it really good. I'm so excited for writing a new hour. Isn't that crazy? Yeah. Like, I've been writing jokes. I just ran one by uh, Nadav. Um, sodomy doesn't sound as bad on paper as it is in actual life. Mm -hmm. And he was like, I don't I don't get it. And I was like, no, if someone's like, hey, I'm going to sodomize your front yard, you'd be like, ooh, make sure to get all of it. Mm -hmm. Like, <laughs> but like, and I don't write jokes like that, but I've been writing jokes like just because I don't. Like straightforward. I've been just writing punch jokes yeah. just for fun. Uh, what was the other one I wrote? Oh, I fuck like a Tesla. And that's a fucking easy one. But like, I love those. How do you fuck like a Tesla? I'm um, fast. I'm quiet. And there better be a plug around. And so, so like, but I, I like those quick ones. And then I, and then what's interesting about comedy. Did you know what's funny though? What? By the way, about a joke like that. What? You could do like some huge theater, have like this epic show and someone leaves and they go, I love that Tesla joke. And you're like, of the whole fucking hour? Of the whole fucking like hour. Like of the stories and all the like the insightful stuff or the whatever kind of like, you know, really on. And they're like, no, nah, Tesla, because it's memorable. Yeah. You know, it's oh, memorable. that's the ones that Leanne remembers. Yeah. Um, I've been uh, obsessed with writing lately. I, what I did is not there's a little. I, I don't I don't know. I took those poster boards, you know, yeah. the kind that in high school or grade school you do your artwork on and then get send it to the teacher. And I put them on my tape on my desk and I just write jokes all over it. And then I go through and I pick out the ones that are any good and then move it to the next one. And so that I have some jokes that so I'll have should have a poster board full of jokes. What was I oh, and then here's the one that I I would I don't do these well. I don't do these types of jokes well, but they're take a breath. So I watched a bunch of stand up the other week with the girls, right? Yeah. Cuz cuz yeah because Netflix did the the best of the best of yeah. the year. And so you were on it. Uh it was your bank joke, I think. Um Yeah. My period party was on it. That's why we watched it cuz Isla was there. Um we watched a bunch of great stips, clips and then we started watching a bunch of great stand up. And then the girls started asking me about writing comedy and it's funny. I don't dedicate time to actually write comedy but lately i've been i have been so mm -hmm. i started breaking down how i write jokes for them for them and when i do a great hour the best it is the way the best way and what it is is if you for me if i write a ton of different types of jokes and can plug them in wherever there's dryness in the act like have a, like four good stories four big stories but have shit in between to connect the tissue and so they were like, and it was funny because you know this, but like you'll come up with a premise and then, and no one will like it, but you have to commit to it to get there. So like the premise I came up with, we're watching something about serial killers, uh, the Night Stalker. It's great. Oh, did you finish it? Yeah. It's phenomenal. It's, what did he do for, like he was a dick though. <laughs> Don't you think? He's not a cool guy. I mean, <laughs> I think he was probably misogynistic a little bit. Yeah. <laughs> he was a dick. He was. Did, um, he had great cheekbones. He did. He did have great cheekbones. He's, with a good set of teeth. I wonder if he would have still been a serial killer. Yeah. His teeth were really bad. It, I wonder if his teeth are the reason he's a, uh, oh my God. They talked about, 
Yeah. That he looked like a jack o' lantern. No, survivors though would be like this dude's breath. Like when they, when they were first meeting, det- like talking to detectives, like his breath was unbelievable. His he, he had smelled. rotting rotting teeth and gums. and impacted teeth. Yeah, the that is a fucking amazing. And he died of cancer. Yeah, fifty three years old. Yeah, so which means he was doing this shit. What in his twenties? I mean, that's well, a. I said I was saying to the girls I. We were like, they were like, I goes, how come we don't have serial killers anymore? I said, oh, we got school shooters. They, we weed them out. We get them early. They become a school shooter and then they never end up being yeah. a serial killer. And they're like, dad, what is this? Like, is that like a bit? And I was like, oh, I'm going to work on it in my head. And they're like, it's not funny. I go, yeah. well, no, it's not funny to you right now until I make it funny. Right. And they're like, dad, it's not, it's not like, that's not funny. School shootings aren't funny. And I was like, oh, you're not allowed to tell me like, and then, and then you realize that like, Committing to like small grains of thoughts mm-hmm. and going, I'm going to work this through into a bit and one day people will laugh, but it's got to be shitty first. Right. Like it's got to be like. It's got to not work. It's got to not work. Yeah. Like it's got to. Anything that works out of the gate is either like one of those magic things or it's too common. Way too common. But if you struggle with it and like bomb with it. Or just really dig a hole and you're like, fuck. But you stay trying to figure it out. Those are the ones that really leave an impact. I, had a, I, I told a joke on here one time that I had Nadav edit out that I then took on the road. And that was one of my favorite jokes. And it's the Confederate statues joke. Yeah. But it was nine different ways of racist before it got good. Yeah. And, and you, you kind of got to sit there and go, I understand I'm not doing this right. Yeah. You go, you, what you do is you're like... It's like you're trying to solve a puzzle or a riddle and you're like, what about this? And everyone's just like, no. And, but they're but saying, you're like, yeah, but I, I know that I'm going to like guess right at some point. At some point I'm going to figure, I'm going to yeah. get a, I'm going to get a, a curve ball of yeah. right in there. Yeah. I like, I, I, I'm obsessed with history right now. I'm obsessed with it. Yeah. Because, and I'm, I, I and these are all just thoughts, but like there is a, there's such an uncertainty in today's world that we live in where I remember I, there was a, a young man that died that was, um, that passed away. It was in my newsfeed. I don't know the kid, but he was androgynous mm-hmm. and they were saying he, but I thought it was a she, but then I was like, Oh, I'll never find out if it was a, like, I will never find out what this is, what, who this is, the person, like, I, I can't even talk about it now. Because the world we live in, there's no certainty. There's very everyone likes to have you on uneasy ground. Because when you were on a firm standing ground, you were an asshole. Right. And so now it's better that they have you kind of. But there's something really cool about history where you're like, oh no, Japanese people ate Americans. Like, <laughs> it's horrible to say, but that is true. That, that is true, that and they, you can't deny it. That they what? They ate, ate American soldiers. They ate their livers. They cut chunks off their back, threw them in a pit so the meat wouldn't swallow. But it's so horrible to say, but it's history. Like, you can't deny it. Sure. Isn't that crazy that uh, Chimi, yeah, Chimijima, Chimijima uh, was an island right, right by uh, uh, Iwo Jima. Japanese Lord killed and consumed five American airmen. Wow. Chichijima. It's a book I read. Fly, Flyboys, yeah. And those were like George Bush's friends. And so what, the, these uh, were pilots that crashed? Yeah, or? look, it says this. Future, yeah. They're all friends of future. The only one to evade capture was future President George H.W. Bush. Holy shit. He ran our country and Japanese people ate his friends. And he... And he I never knew about this. And then he was like... Being shot down, bombing raids, a tiny island 700 miles north or south of t- Tokyo. Eight were captured. The ninth, to on, the only to evade capture was future U.S. President. Then 20-year-old <laughs> George H.W. Bush. After the war, it was discovered that the captured airmen had been beaten and tortured before being executed. The airmen were beheaded on the orders of the Lieutenant General, uh, what is it, Yoshio? By the way, now that you've listened to The Real Dictators, you're going to fucking love to hear this. Because remember that guy, have you listened to the one about the Japanese guy, Toto? Um, In no, Real no, di- Dictators? No. It, sh- it proves what a fucking ineffective cunt that guy was. What a Here's the deal. This you heard about in an audio book? I read this book. Ooh. I read this book. And by the way, they're talking about these. There were tons more. Here's what happened. What's this, the book called? 
Flyboys. It is fucking amazing. Wow. And 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 but what what is fascinating about this is I can't defend cannibalism, but I guess I can in this is that these guys that prime minister yeah. of Japan at the time, the one that instigated the attack on Pearl Harbor, who started World War One, World War Two in the most aggressive way with the US. Like yeah. what a fucking mic drop. <laughs> like what a fucking oh, I'm sorry. You, like, that is such a sucker punch. Like, literally, you're sitting there going, oh, shit, there's a fight over there. And some guy just come and jacks you in the jaw. You're like, what? He's like, no, you're in it, bitch. And you're like, yeah. what the fuck? That guy was a absolute moron, right? An absolute moron who couldn't even kill himself right. At the end, couldn't even kill himself right. Missed his fucking heart. Right? Really? Fucking jackass. And what's great about history is knowing you can't get in trouble for saying this because it's true. That's what I love about history. This is why you're embracing this it so is, much? What I'm loving about history is that you can't deny that fucking Lenin and Stalin were fucking mouth-breathing, window-licking morons who were just as bad as those guys that stormed the Capitol. That's all they were. That's what they were. They were yeah. revolutionaries. They didn't have it figured out. Stalin and Lenin did the same shit that Tsar Nicholas did. The same fucking shit, Tom. And kill the Jews. And kill the Jews. By the way, I'm talking way too loud right now. Yeah. But like yeah. that's what like it's, you were really enthusiastic about that last part. I'm obsessed. <laughs> but you know, Tsar Nicholas like fucking started killing Jewish people, and they were like, "What the fuck are you doing?" The revolutionaries came in, the Bolsheviks took over the government. We're gonna do better, and the first thing to do is start killing Jews, also. And mm. you're like, "What the fuck?" The f they don't they didn't change anything about that government at all, other than they're like, "Yeah, yeah, yeah. We just won't call the rich people uh, the elites. They'll just be us." Like yeah. it, I don't know what I, I'm obsessed with history and I, it's giving me like a warm blanket. This episode of two bears, one cape is brought to you by policy genius. I think I speak for everyone when I can say, thank God it's a new year. It's gotta be better than last year. Um, if trying to save some cash is on your mind, think about reshopping your home and auto insurance rates with policy genius. You could save up to $1,055 per year with help from their licensed experts. It is a really simple process and I thank them for doing it this way. You go to policygenius.com, answer a few quick questions about yourself and your property, and then they do the rest. They compare rates from over 30 top insurers from progressive to nationwide to find the lowest quotes. Their licensed experts will look for ways to maximize your savings. And then if it's time to switch over, they switch you over. You don't have to do it. I love them for that. If you're a homeowner, make 2021 the year you save up to $1,055 by simply reshopping your home and auto insurance. Just head to policygenius.com to get started right now. Policy Genius, when it comes to insurance, it's nice to get it right. This podcast is brought to you by Viore. I love Viore. We all know that I'm running 2,000 miles this year, and I ran 1,000 miles last year. Here's my deal. I like to get up, work out in the morning, and then I like to put on active wear clothes. But I don't want my clothes to suggest, oh, this guy's going for a workout. I want to look nice. I want to look good and nice, but I want to be in clothes where if I decide I want to, I can just hop up on the treadmill and fucking pound out. Or grab a kettlebell while we're watching a movie and do some kettlebell squats. Or That's, just dunk. Or just dunk. That's what I love about Viore. It is a new perspective on performance wear. If you are sick and tired of the old traditional workout gear, get yourself some Viore. They're all designed to be worked out and it doesn't look like it. So you feel comfortable and you feel like you can actually hang out in the real world, go and be around people. And I actually sleep in them. They're that great. They've got women performance joggers, men's, Core shorts, which I fucking love, and the ponto, ponto shorts. They're great for like literally lounging around the house or hopping on the treadmill. Viore is an investment in your happiness. For our listeners, they're offering 20% off your first purchase. Get yourself some of the most comfortable and versatile clothing on the planet at vioreclothing.com slash bears. That's V-U-O-R-I clothing.com slash bears. Not to mention, you will receive 20% off your first purchase, but enjoy free shipping on any U.S. order over $75 and free returns, go to vioreclothing.com slash bears and discover the versatility of Viore clothing. Speaking of cannibalism, were you also obsessed with that Army Hammer story? Can I tell you? Who, see, this is, okay. What a perfect transition, Tom. Yeah. Because. Good looking guy. All right, great actor. Here's what's amazing. I'm not comfortable talking about army hammer with my thoughts because once again we go back to the world we live in now where i don't know if what i'm saying is right or wrong got you but but the history stuff i can say i can talk 
definitively about history. But with Army Hammer, when I read it, I was like, oh, it's a little, it's really fucked up. What is the actual, see that, the, the photo, what's it say in that, uh, yeah, in that link when you click it? Once his concerns want to return to America so they can figure out joint custody. Oh, okay. But okay. like, okay, so, and now here's the other thing is I don't know everything about this Army Hammer thing. Was it just that he was DMing chicks? Well, here's the thing that's not cool, I think, about... So, whoever leaked the DMs... Yeah. They just leak his side of it, and you can tell that there's a back and forth. Oh, they just... They almost, like, scrubbed their sides? Like, yeah, yeah, yeah. Like, hey, I got it's all. It's just all his stuff, like, in a row, but you can tell he... That, like, when you read it, you go, oh, he's responding, right? Because he goes, I want to see. I want to see everything. I want to see your brain. I would definitely bite it. I can't even read the other part of 100%. it. 100%. But... I'll try to, f or try to fuck it. Not sure which. Probably both. If I fucked you in a vegetative state, <laughs> I had to keep you, feed you, wash you, and keep fucking you. I actually had a joke where I said that. But if you go to like the, <laughs> that's a good joke. Uh, if you go to like the other ones, there's some that are like clearly a, there's clearly an interaction going on. You know? Wait, keep going. These wait, how? I'm like, but see, like, it's like even the way that reads. Oh my god. Okay, wait, when he says so hard, and it makes me confused as to why is that even possible? So hard thinking of holding your heart. My okay, hand but also, fuck, that's scary. Me. I never admitted. Like, the, you know that like there's an interaction. It's not just him writing fucking one thing after another you know if it is him just like if she was like what's up and that's it that's response, it yeah then you're mentally then Ill. you're like yeah. holy fuck army but there's uh there's there's even more i mean like you know uh you blocked but, this account but, but <laughs> look, the look, last thing he wrote you blocked me <laughs> but, but look at the thing he goes no but when you said it like that's a response yeah but you're not seeing the other what is being said i wish i had someone i wish i had like a a, a deer a, like what like he's not just saying that so here's my question. If that's his... By the way, I don't really think he's killing people and eating their hearts. No, I think it's his kink and it's his fantasy. It's his kink and yeah. fantasy yeah. is to like... Like, you know... It's, if, here's the thing. It's not a chill one. It's not <laughs> It's not like a cool... But I, I still think that it's fantasy stuff. I don't yeah, think... Yeah, but like what, what, is, what is different from that as to like BDSM and like... like t and being someone's slave and... It's totally different. You don't think it's different? No, no. I mean, it's it's different, but it's like, at what point do we draw oh, the right. line where you're allowed to have a kink, but some kinks oh. can't play? Oh, right, right, Like, right. at what point do people start going, don't tell anyone? Because, like, I remember getting a video. I'm really talking loud today. I remember getting a video from someone, and they were, like, uh, from that mistress I did the thing with, and she yeah. was one of the videos, and it was so creepy. It was um, a kink where people liked walking upon bodies in the forest. Uh-huh. And finding them in like pantyhose, like laid out in the, in the leaves. And I was like, oh my God, like you just found an unconscious girl or like a dead body. Right, right. And then I don't know if they jack off on it or whatever. Yeah. Or what, I never watched past just a body in leaves. But I, I'm open-minded enough to say, I guess as long as you're not hurting people and that's, that's your you, kink. That's generally, I think the, the point of view on all these is like, as long as there's, consenting people and no one's and this is just that it's fucked up right like i mean that's, Hammer, that's it's just what that it's, it's fucked up. it seems like it's like i'm cool judging people on being fucked up yeah yeah i mean that seems to be the thing but like like you're saying though i think the way that like you indulge in this if you're him is if like the the woman is like you know pouring fake blood on herself you know and like like yeah i'm bleeding and or you, you get know. like a deer liver yeah yeah exactly hold it in your hand and you're like yeah that's fucking so I don't know. weird listen it's so weird but like I've never had as much pussy as him. So yeah, like, I'm yeah. sure he gets tired of regular pussy and he's like, needs to be right. I, I mean, I'm, I I'm guessing I don't, I'm trying to defend well, a guy who's not defending himself. Read this one. And then stitch you back. up. <laughs> this is a really intense. Yeah. Because I won't let you die. It'd be a waste of a perfect slave. I would fucking not use that word. Tell okay. me the fantasy. Can you imagine all the warm blood all over my cock as I fuck you in the ass? Okay. Drink it up while I fucking you. Drinking it while I fuck you. Oh, coming blood is all over us. Okay, maybe I should have read all these before I was like, fucking me rubbing blood all over both our faces. I mean, I guess. I mean, it's just his fantasy, though, right? I don't know. What's the next one say? Hey, wow, head rush. <laughs> just how completely. Okay. Oh, wow. Why would. Can I tell you? I, I would fire the guy just for the fucking fact that he's DMing this to people. 
It's pretty. It's pretty aggressive. I do, I've never DM'd anybody. It's pretty aggressive. Brand you, tattoo you, mark you, shave your head, keep your hair with me, cut a piece. Of, this is so fucking intense. Like, yeah. okay, I'm starting to get it now. I'm starting to get it. You're hard. This is. <laughs> <laughs> cut a piece of your skin off. Make you cook it for me. Make you cook it for me. I mean, I feel I like mean, I feel. He would love Flyboys. He would love the book Flyboys. I mean, feel the test can be endless. Whose slave master relationship is the strongest? We'd win. When I tell you to slit your wrists and use the blood as lube for anal. It's aggressive. I mean, but it's so thought out. Let's call my dominatrix and see if she can offend it. Okay. Do we, 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 we I don't, I'm not going to, the one, uh, let's see if Mistress Isabella. Oh, this is your personal dom. Yeah, but, and she's a little more, <laughs> I don't mean to be shitty, but she's a little more, she could okay. get into. Got gotcha. you. The, I hope this is still her number. It's not. I can already feel it. What if she's like, shut up, slave. Hold on one second. Who's this? Hey, Bert. Hey, is this you? It's Bert. I'm on a podcast. Yeah. I'm on a podcast with Tom Segura, and we wanted to talk um, BDSM shit. Hi. Yeah, it's Isabella. Okay, good, 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 good. Hi, Isabella. Hey. Hi. So can you unpack the army hammer fan stuff for us the what do you know what's going on with army hammer no how do you not Man, know, I this? know who that is oh he so he got i don't watch tv i'm renovating a mansion right there now i don't even turn on my tv what's going on okay so he has got a cannibal fantasy an hey, i'm gonna give the phone to tom because tom knows it better okay hold on one second here's tom segura okay. hi isabella Hi. So we were we were talking about this story that um, is kind of viral about uh, Army Hammer is a well known actor, um, like early thirties. He's been in a bunch of shows and movies. The Lone Ranger. Okay. And um, so somebody leaked his DMs on Instagram, where he basically just it's a it's a full like cannibalism fantasy, right? So he just he, where he is the one being cannibalized no oh. he wants to you know he's like i want to cut you up i'm going to eat your heart i'll you know i'll make you cook a piece of yourself and then i want to fuck you while you're you know while i'm eating you With and use, use the blood on yeah we'll drink your blood and use the the blood as lube and i'm saying because this is like a you know everybody's talking about this that that i think this is all just fantasy like it's his fantasy right he's just Mm -hmm. And it got leaked. But like, what is like, do you run into the cannibalism fantasy a lot? I've had the cannibalism fantasy um, from the other perspective, from someone wanting to sacrifice themselves for my well-being, someone oh. wanting to give up their body for nourishment for me as a sacrifice. You know, it's a, a holy sacrifice to give your life over to someone else. And then the sure. idea that they are that n nourishing themselves from it and able to continue life so i've never had it the other way around mm -hmm. but i had to i had to be that person in one of the fantasies that i've encountered where it was one hour of dialogue while a man was sitting in a cage and i had to tell him how i was going to roast him like a pig and that i was going to feed my whole village a female warrior and his meat was going to taste so good because he's so fat we've been fattening him up and it was like i had to be that person who had to like come up with those things to right say. Right. Um, and it wasn't my thing, so it was like a complete improv thing. Yeah. Um, and all of those things were like, you know, Go we're going to roast pig. you and smell you. Sure. And smell your, your skin burning. And well, it's funny hearing you say it. On you and all that stuff. So hearing you say it. <laughs> it it's, sounds erotic. Yeah, it's kind of nice. <laughs> now we're both like, hey, uh, let's uh, let's get some people in here. Ask her, where do you draw the line? <laughs> Where do you draw the line with, with fantasy and like... Oh, hey, yeah, yeah, yeah. So this okay. is... Because this is kind of the discussion is like... Where's the line with fantasy and so, like, cause I was thinking that, you know, if this guy was, he's writing all this crazy shit to someone, um, that like the safe way to indulge in it is like, you know, but he wants it to be obviously exciting and thrilling and close to real is like fake blood or like, you know, animal body parts. But like, is there like, how do you draw the line on someone who's like, I have a cannibalism, you know, fantasy in my mind. Do you just set up those parameters? It might be a hard sell. I mean, it's a hard sell for men to say, I like dressing like a woman. Sure. 
Um, I can imagine if someone says, I have a cannibalism fantasy where while I'm having sex with you, I want to think about devouring your skin and flesh and cutting you open. That would probably scare some people. I would think so. Um, so I would think that he would have to approach it with really trusted people. So it's funny that his things get leaked because obviously he wasn't trusting the right people. Absolutely. Um, <laughs> Um, but you know, I think it's hard for, um, a lot of people to open up about these things, but mm-hmm. that's definitely a unique one. And it can be something as easy as, you know, getting props and playing it out in your head without ever it going to the line of hurting somebody Yeah. or even like even consensual mutilation. You know, there's cuttings or things like that, that happen within the community community scarification piercing yeah uh, bloodletting all of those things can happen within a a you know bonded pair in in the community it's not something you'd want to do with a stranger or someone you just met because there's so much trust involved sure but um a fantasy can still remain a fantasy without it being harmful to anyone it's just a matter of the individual person and where that sociopathic line is drawn of like knowing what's consent and what's not consent do you think you should cancel someone it, based on their it's fantasies? It's totally oh. viable, but I, I feel for him that he was able, he thought he was able to trust somebody to open up about these things, and then someone's like raking him over the coals for it. Yeah, because that, that it, actually, that's, that's further hate. investigation, and he's actually crossed boundaries and hurt people. That's another story. Right. But if it's something that was consensual between him and the person he was having this dialogue with or this relationship with, and it's very unfortunate that. Ooh. Yeah, it's I think she now being weaponized it. against him. Yeah, I agree. I agree. Here, I'm going to pass you back to Bert, but thank you very sure. much for your insight, Isabella. You're welcome. Hey, it's always good talking Hi. to you. Thank you very much. You I'll cool. see you for our regular <laughs> session on Thursday. All right. Well, yeah, we'll, I'll see you until the end. Bye. <laughs> <laughs> Thanks a lot. Take care, okay? Right, I'll talk to you soon. All right, bye. Bye. I love having a mistress on my uh the bdsm mistress on my yeah i mean that was a great so so her take helpful. was i bet he does feel betrayed of course he does what a shitty i would love to hear the woman. all he was he was like see, was, see who the woman who leaked it was they're not they're not i don't think it's out there man yeah she uh, kept herself anonymous yeah yeah that's but it's also it fucked up his job he was about to go do he had to pull out of the movie um yeah, now he's publicly shamed. But I bet you um, does not have the app. I bet you he's going to get so much puss from this. I mean, there were women that wanted to fuck Richard Ramirez. Yeah, I know. So this dude's just like, yeah, I have this crazy fantasy. You know how many it's chicks are going nice to sign up and be like, eat eat me. Fucking bash my brains. I bet army. there's a lot of, and you know, he's going to get the one. It's almost like throwing out well, feelers. Well, what's the other? What says after video goes viral? No, that video. one there. Graphic NS. What is this? Is this a different story? No, it's uh, from a few days foolish ago. Foolish Attempted Humor. Let's see it. Foolish Attempted Humor yeah, click is that. the name of a great special. <laughs> <laughs> What is it? Can you tell me what it says? Army Hammer recently issued an apology after the current controversy of his alleged DMs and an NSFW video allegedly posted by the actor on his private Instagram account. Okay, you got to find that video. Uh, it's it's um it's the video is about this chick he used to fuck. He called her Miss Cayman. I think it's Cayman Island. What really? I don't know if what? she was Miss Cayman Island. I think he's just. I don't know. You know, are you being serious about the? Yeah, it was Miss Cayman. He called some woman Miss Cayman. I guess for Cayman Islands. I don't know. I but, you know I really never knew who Army Hammer was. To be honest with you, well, like it's bad. You know what sucks for him is like I knew he was in the Lone Ranger, but he wore a mask, so I really never saw who he was. Yeah, but like this is the first Wait, time. Is I, this the video? Oh, yeah. Okay, hold putting on. my headsets on. One second. One second. Yep. I will tell you. Okay, go ahead. Hold on, hold on. Hold on, let me turn on, it up. On, let me on. see. Okay. Press pause. Give us... Army Hammer fucks a lot, apparently. Yeah. Let's see here. Okay. Let's see. I don't hear anything. Sorry, this ad blocker thing's fucking it up. Let me try to you find out. You know what's interesting is, is it seems to me that sex is getting everyone in trouble. Like what? What do you mean? Like, like ev- everything. What you, else? People's dicks 
get them in trouble more than anything. Yeah. Like that is the number one thing getting people in trouble right now. In our cancel culture, it's people's cocks. Guys' dicks and and following their dick and not having the... Like, what is it about me? I mean, I I was saying the other day, I was like, I've only fucked girlfriends. Like, I've only, I've never fucked strangers. You never had sex with a stranger? No. I, I mean, I had... I have, why did I take that back? I fucked one girl that I spent the day with and uh from liverpool but i think she just did it because her and her sister wanted to spend the night at my house i think she was like he's cute i'll fuck him yeah. we have a place to stay and I, and i was just i would have let her sleep in my bed for free but she fucked me anyway by the way her tongue didn't stick all the way out of her mouth did i ever tell you that no yeah her tongue was connected at the bottom so she couldn't get it out of her mouth so she had kissed like this how do you normally kiss with my tongue out of my mouth like ah. that's how you kiss yeah i go into the mouth and then what do you do with it i fucking back it back and forth Show me. I paint it. Like that? Yeah. I, go, uh, you got, I like tongue in the mouth. I like tongue in the mouth. Oh, you like the tongue in the oh, mouth? Oh, I like big fat tongue in the mouth. Every time? No. Leanne kind of has been... Uh, I, I don't know if it's because I'm... <laughs> she's more of like a... Just fuck. Yeah. Can I tell you that one... There's, I went out with this girl. I was dating uh, in... I guess I'll just say it's been long enough. But... <laughs> 20 years ago so i was in boston and yeah. i uh i started dating this girl you know just whatever like casually right and I show up with coffee and she's working at a place down the street and then you know whatever next time we go out we kiss and she she led with tongue so if if you just went to go you know kiss her tongue would be out and i was like that's weird and then it's like okay registers in your mind and then like second kiss her tongue's out and I'm like what the fuck is like so even on like a well I'll I'll pick you up later kiss like that her tongue would be out and I was like I don't know if I could do this like I <laughs> she would lead it like 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 if she gave you a peck her tongue would be in your mouth it's like she would scream before knocking on your door like yeah. hey gung, 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 yeah. gung, gung, gung. and I started I started I was telling I was like I don't think I can I mean, I go. I don't. This is just. This is going to be impossible. Like, oh yeah, that would be tough. I got. I got told when I was in ninth grade that I didn't know how to kiss, and the girl reset my kissing. Really? She said uh, you kiss really bad, and I went for real. Marlene Tamayo. And I was like, yeah. She was like, can I show you how to kiss, and then we can kiss. What like, were you doing? I have no idea. And what'd she show you? We can always call her, but I have no idea. But but she actually was like, she keep your stopped like, and mm -hmm. said. I, she and she taught me how to kiss, and then I now kiss like Marlene Tamayo. Like but that's great. Oh, it was she, the best. She, that's like, like the greatest thing. Shit. It's like when do. someone says, "Hey, you smell," and you're yeah. like, "What?" And you're like, "You smell." You stink, you, man. And you're like, "Oh fuck, maybe I need a shower." Yeah, I'm just telling you. My buddy Obi, one time we were at a bar, and he goes, "Your breath smells," and I was like, "What are you being an asshole?" And he goes, "No, I'm your friend." Right. I'm trying to tell you your breath smells, and if you're trying to hook up with a chick, you need gum or something. And I was like, "That's being a kind of hurt my feelings." He was like, "I'm." I can lie to you or I can tell you the truth. Right. No, he hooked you up. Marlene but like, that, like that is actually, Marlene is like, that's a compassionate, she helped you so much by doing that. Uh, like I should have told that girl, you're fucking, you're going to upset everybody with this tongue shit you're doing with every kiss. I should have told her. It's funny. I've only just like, if I, I, I've only dated, I've only fucked people I've dated and I've only, I gotta be honest with you, I haven't kissed that many people. I haven't I really had, kissed. I would probably maybe, I had sex with mostly strangers. For real? Yeah. Oh, I could tell you the parents' names of everyone I fucked. I definitely couldn't tell you the names of the people I fucked. Definitely. Not like how all. Many, how many people have you fucked? I don't know. As, and it's not a crazy number. It's that six. like. No, it's more than that. That's the, my number. No, I it's know. Six. Me... Six, but it could be seven. I, for, I can't remember. Here's the thing. I think if you're like, if your number is like nine 10 whatever or less you know the exact number my number is not crazy but i'm like i don't remember if it's like 15 17 you know like eight like it's in that so it's 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 not much more try to it's track just, it try to track it right now like right. like like give me i'll i'll uh lost your virginity at what age 17 17 me too yeah here i'll make a i'll make a list shout out to that girl she was a fucking saint okay girlfriend Next one, um, college girlfriend for me. 
That number was 18. By the way, two girls in between there that I dated that I didn't have sex with because I was so bad at it, I didn't want to show anyone how bad I was. Yeah. Yep. And then next girl dated for five years, cheated on me. And then the next one was a girlfriend that I dated when the Rolling Stone article came out and moved to New York dating her. How'd you find out the one cheated on you? I, uh, it was, it was doctor told me. <laughs> really? <laughs> really? I don't like saying it cause it sounds shitty, but it sounds shitty to her cause I'm cool with it. I'm fine. Yeah. You know, but yeah, I had something going on and the doctor's like, Hey man, I think you're getting cheated on. I was like, nah, he was like, I'm pretty sure. He's like, did you, are you fucking other people? And I went, no. And he goes, you don't have to lie to me. I said, no. And he goes, okay. I remember him saying very clearly, when you go to Yanni's, that was the name of the bar. Do you and your dick split up to cover more territory? And I was like, excuse what? Me. He goes, excuse me. He goes, when you go to Yanni's, do you and your dick split off and then meet up at the end of the night? Your dick's like, oh, I got laid. And I was like, no, I'm with my dick all night long. He goes, then you're getting cheated on. And he was like, unless you're lying to me right now, you're getting cheated on. And I was like, it's impossible. And he goes, okay. And I was like, and then I was like, and then I was, and then I found out literally days later, I was getting cheated on. Holy shit. Days later, I was like, I was like, that's so crazy. Like, I, how did I get this? From riding horses or something? Riding horses? I thought, you know, I thought I got. Wait, I, what did it look like? What did it feel like? It was a, uh, it was the clap. It was so fucking painful. So painful. So wait, what's it like when you get to call, like, do you call her or do you see her in person? I was confused. I honestly thought I got it from drinking because I was like, you know what? We went on a hike in Switzerland when we were in Europe and I drank from a trough. I bet I got it from that. Cause we didn't bring water on the hike and we got up to like fucking 7,000 feet. And I was like, Oh my God, I'm fucking dying of thirst. There's a trough that horses are drinking out of. And we drank out of that trough. And I was like, I must got it from that. And then the doctor was like, no, I'm telling you you didn't. And there was a, I had to wait for test results. And I told the doctor, i trust me. She didn't cheat on me. I didn't cheat on her. I guarantee you I got it from this trough. And he goes, you definitely didn't get it from a trough. And then the test results came back and it was the doctor. And he was like, he was like, Hey man, have you confronted her about this? And I was like, no. He was like, y you should. And I was like, I and then I think I went, I went out of town for something. I went out of town for, on like a trip and I was taking the medication, but I was like, I don't know what this doctor's out of his fucking mind. Yeah. And then I came home and she pulled me aside. She's like, um, I cheated on you while you were in Russia. And I was like, Oh, and this is, but this is before you even tell her what happened. I had said it to her, but I was like, I, but I almost like defending her to herself. Yeah. And uh, and then she was like, she came out and she, and she just said she had kissed the guy. And I was like, hold on. And then all of a sudden I was like, uh, I'm going to do the math real quick. And then I was like, that's, and then it escalated. The next time I talked to her about it, it was, they had definitely done more than kiss. And then, then it, all of a sudden I was like, okay, I just got to fucking deal with this. It was really hard because it was the second person I never had sex with. And and uh, you told her you're on medication. And yeah, and I was like, you should get tested. And she was like, I'm I'm fine. You must have got it. You must have cheated on me. And I was like, okay. And then I said to her what the doctor said to me. I said, when when I go to Yanni's, me and my dick do not split up to cover more territory. And so I was. It was it was really hard to deal with. It was yeah. like super hard to deal with. And then uh, and 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 it. I think it's the reason I didn't fuck around was because. I like, I just was like, everyone's got, everyone's got diseases. You know what it is? It's what? trauma. It's trauma. Like you were traumatized by the, your second person you, you slept with. Yeah. Had this happen to you. So it, oh. it fucks you up forever. Yeah. Basically. Oh yeah. It, it, it fucked me up forever. I, I remember, you know, it's so funny. The same thing happened with the fucking coronavirus with Dr. Drew. The right. same thing happened. Now that you say trauma, you are so fucking right about this. Yeah. So, I had. Uh, it's why I did. It's why I never graduated to hard drugs, because I OD'd when I was nineteen, and it's so traumatic to OD that you go like I was on a path to like trying like I was trying harder drugs, but when you OD, you're not like, all right, 
got to get back on the horse. Like you just are, you're terrified, you know, like yeah. in the same way of like a Dude, STD or something. That happened with me with marijuana. And like when I was 14, I smoked way too much marijuana and got way too high. And then I was terrified of marijuana. Yeah. And to this day, I, that's why I won't take an edible. So I'm like, I don't want to deal with what I dealt with when I was 14. Just have Diaz give you a chill one. And you'll be fine. <laughs> all right. Pigskin fans. The moment you have been waiting for all season is right around the corner. And DraftKings, the official daily fantasy partner of Super Bowl 55, is bringing back their golden ticket giveaway with up to $55 million in prizes up for grabs. All you have to do to get your share of these huge prizes is enter DraftKings' free Super Bowl prediction challenge. Once you submit your picks, you will get a free instant prize up to $25,000. And if you have the most predictions correct you could win the top prize of one million dollars download the app now enter the free prediction challenge and ask answer questions like who'll score last and boom get ready to make it rain download the DraftKings app now and use promo code bears to enter the free 55 million dollar super bowl predictions challenge everyone gets an instant prize up to twenty five thousand dollars just for playing so use promo code bears now and enter the free 55 million dollar super bowl challenge only at DraftKings the official daily fantasy partner of Super Bowl 55. Terms and conditions, eligibility restrictions apply. See DraftKings.com for details. So this is so funny you say it's trauma. That's so funny. So when I, I had, you know, one, one night, I, maybe, I, maybe I, in my life, I've, out of my six. So I had four girlfriends, two one night stands, but there were people I knew. Yeah. And, um, the well, not the Liverpool chick, and then this other girl. Yeah, and I can I on this one I convinced myself I got an STD. I convinced myself. I believed. By the way, this is hardcore secret time. I'm sure I've talked about this on other places, but I'm. I convinced myself I had genital warts. Convinced myself. I mean, convinced myself. No proof. Convinced myself I had genital warts. There was a. There was a discoloration around the center of my dick that I couldn't really, I never really noticed before. It's what we now call a circumcision scar. But you're like, I have an STD. I lost it. I fucking had probably the first only mental, legit mental breakdown I've ever had in my life where I just was like, I was fuck. It, it was horrific. It was horrific. What I don't ever, I've never really dealt with like mental issues too bad, but man, this one time, it was like horrific. I went to a doctor and the doctor said, it's nothing. It actually, the doctor said, what are you putting on your dick? I said, a lot of stuff. I'm soaking it in vinegar. I'm spraying Tanactin on it every day, two or three or four times a day. I'm taking some scissors to it to clear it up. And the doctor's like, all right, stop doing that. Huh? What are you putting on your dick? A lot of stuff. I was like, I soak it in vinegar every day. And so, so he, uh, so, so I, I stopped fucking with my dick and everything goes away and i'm like okay it's dormant in my head yeah. i'm like it's dormant so i i i then uh meet leanne this is the next person i have sex with i meet leanne and i start dating leanne and uh maybe there's one other person in there that i dated this girl from the next show and and i tell leanne i'm just giving you a heads up like I, I i've i've always thought i had genital warts i said warts right I didn't say herpes, did I? I don't know. Okay, anyway, and she was like, she was like, you okay? I'm I'm looking at you. You look to totally fine. I was like, I know, but I'm just giving you a heads up. She's like, okay, I don't know what to tell you, but like, you're telling her, you, you're telling her, I have before, them? before we have sex. You're like, I have. Genital. I was just telling her, yeah, yeah but fucking being upfront. That's by the way, that's what's wrong with me is I I believe when it comes to cr all the coronavirus shit, I believe in being upfront about with everyone about everything, and so and that doesn't play so well these days. And so. I tell her, and she was like, you're fine. I, I don't know what you're talking about. I'm looking at you. You don't look. I said, I know. I know. I, it, maybe I don't have. I look. I, and I tell her my OCD. I tell her my problem. She goes, okay, fine. So we, I, I, I go to a doctor again, and I show my doctor this doctor my dick. And she's like, you're fine. You don't have anything. We go to get have a baby. We have a baby. We have Georgia. We get tested. Both get tested for all venereal diseases, including genital warts, because that's the one that causes cervical cancer. And HPV, and the lady says, and I say, I just, you know, I think I might have. And she goes, no, I, we've tested your blood. You don't have it. And I said, I don't believe you. She's like, no, I'm certain. Yeah, this is we've tested test. your blood yeah. and Leanne's blood. Yeah. You don't have it. And yeah. I'm like, okay. So when, when, we, when Drew tested positive for coronavirus, yeah. that same trauma showed up. 
that same fucking, and it's the back and forth with the doctor where I believed him, I believed myself and not him. Drew calls and says, you might want to get tested. Or, well, Nadav calls and says, you might want to get tested. Drew's got coronavirus. Yeah. And then I call Drew. Drew's like, yeah, so I get tested. I don't believe it. You don't believe that you're negative. Don't, and I don't believe it. We get, wait two days, get tested again. Don't believe it. Get the PNC test. Still don't believe it. Tom, I didn't fucking believe that test to this day. I don't believe that test. I mean, on my on my soul, I don't believe that. And for whatever fucking reason, it's trauma. And I never realized it was trauma until you just said it. It's being fucked up by that one experience. Yeah. Fucking ruined so much just logic, not listening to logic. Yes. Because I believed someone and was proven wrong. And I was like, that will never happen again. Yeah. That is, I mean, that is like groundbreaking. That is straight up trauma how much more trauma do i have in my life and what like why do i drink like what the fuck's wrong with me i mean it could be all related man it could be all tied together. so you're telling me that when you did drugs that one time and you had an overdose that right there said it in your head you're like i'm done well it's here's the thing like you know when you say it in a sentence it might not have the same impact what i'm saying is that the experience and the experience of overdosing is not just like the moment that it that you're hospitalized it's like you go back to that to like what your mental state was going into that day and how you approach going out and partying and and what i was doing and then ending up you know in a coma and being in the icu for days and like coming out of that recovering from it having to face everybody you know i'm 19 years old and they're just like are you a junkie or something you know and you're like no so it's so it's so traumatizing to go through the experience that like when I, when I finally went back to school, I'm a freshman in college. I didn't drink alcohol for a year, a full cap, more than a calendar year. And you don't really drink that much alcohol now. I don't. But, but at the time in school, you know, beers and whatever at parties was very, you know, very common. I was just like, I'm not going to touch anything for a while, like for myself. And I just don't want to like have any trouble. You know, so then like a year or so later, I had, you know, I went back to like having beers, whatever, and smoking, I felt comfortable smoking weed. So I would, I would smoke weed. But when like, you know, people would start like taking anything, whether it's like a pill, even like mushrooms, I'd be like, nope. Uh, Cocaine, I was like, nope. Like I'm not trying anything because like this shit was enough. You know, it was enough, dude. It was enough of an experience and I'm high off weed. It, this is fine. So I just stayed like that forever, you know? So how much of your life that you think is defined by your trauma? I mean, we have different traumas, right? Like I'm saying like, that's not my only trauma, but like, tell me more of your traumas. Um, I'm trying to think. Do, are you in therapy? How did you figure this out? Yeah. I mean, I thought that, that the, the overdose one was pretty obvious, you know? Yeah. That, that like, cause I knew, I knew also that like, I remember one time I saw a guy, uh, at because you uh, was it big? We're in Florida, like to always go to Seven Eleven. Like, were they just like everywhere? Like, where you we live? Seven Eleven is everywhere. Yeah. Everywhere. Yeah. And I saw this dude at Seven Eleven, and I'm. This is like a year afterwards, not even a year, maybe less than that. And I saw this dude who I'd partied with, and he goes, he's outside, and he goes, "Hey man, what, what's going on with you?" And I go, "What?" He goes, you "Used to be so much fun, and like now you don't." I go, oh, I think it was when I OD'd. <laughs> Is that what you're talking about? And he was like, well, yeah, but I mean, like, you're here. Like, let's fucking party. And I was like, okay, but, like, you don't understand that I'm probably going to do it a little differently. Like, I'm not going to take the same thing. Yeah. That, that. Uh, oh, yeah, yeah. Oh, I, cause I've never overdosed. I, that, you, that would make total sense that you're like, hey, man, there's, clearly I found there's a limit and I don't want to get near that. Yeah, you're just like, I don't want to get near the limit, you know? Like after this injury, I'm never gonna take the stairs again, bro. So no, this was trauma. Oh shit, this was total trauma. Of course it's oh, trauma. It's not fuck. only not only is it for sure trauma. I was like operated on by like li- literally a trauma surgeon, and I was in the trauma ward. Like they were just like, you have trauma injuries. <laughs> so holy I'm holy shit. I'm sure it'll be long lasting. You know, like. So, okay. Oh, I'll probably wow. weep through every NBA finals going forward, you know? So, 
that's I, by the way i you know i i never really i i kind of uh like an idiot have always kind of like just head butted any type of therapy stuff and was like what, i thought, thought you enjoyed therapy i enjoy therapy by I, I lie a lot in it and i, I don't like because <laughs> yeah. well, i can't tell the truth sometimes because i'm on facetime i'm on facetime oh so you just like so I'm, like sometimes I'll, I'll candy coat stuff yeah and so <laughs> just because if someone got a hold of the video i'd be like fucking horrific horrified and well, I'm yeah. certain there's a guy that can grab my screen and post all my so therapy I kinda, sessions. Yeah, so I kind of brand them friendly. So <laughs> I've had the same thought during therapy. Oh, do you do them online? Yeah, of course. <laughs> I've, I've done that too, where I've been like, and then he's like, how are things going? And I'll be like, good. Good. <laughs> what are you asking? Yeah, he's like, are you going to say something? I'm like, I mean, everything's cool, man. What I Whatever we talked about in therapy last week was so arms distance that i was like i was like yeah man i don't know can't really tell you i don't chilling just fucking ran today oh we were talking about we were talking about oh i know what we were talking about we were talking about uh not celebrating success like not celebrating success so like so i have a hard time every time i have uh done a spec i i destroy things right so go big show every thursday night 9 p.m 8 central Go Big Show TBS. is on TBS. Was the Bert Kreischer, Ber, Bruce Kreischer, yeah, um, was the hot, highest rated show that TBS has had in three years or whatever. Yeah. So immediately I hear that good news, and then I and I instinctually start destroying it and start going, I'll probably get fired. Like in my head, I I can't just sit back and go, nice man, nice, yeah, good job, or or uh, get uh, best of the twenty twenty, yeah, stand up stand ups, and you go, well, yeah, but. They had to put me in because, you know, like you don't, I, I, I can't, uh, the cabin was highest, uh, was, did really well. And I couldn't, I can't celebrate success. I kind of start destroying it in my head. And then my therapist was like, why do you do that? And I said, only losers celebrate success. Real, real winners go whatever. And then move forward and try to create new st stuff and work harder. And he was like, no, that's not how that works. And I was yeah. like, eh. Maybe that's coming from like I was like literally yeah. like that sounds like loser talk like I and so but now that you're talking about trauma I'm going to talk about trauma I bet I have so much fucking trauma and I've heard about people like I remember when we were younger and I don't believe this anymore but I remember I don't believe this at all anymore but when we were younger and you'd make like a rape joke in a comedy club and someone would get up and leave and you'd be like I mean like what the fuck like yeah. you're gonna walk out in the middle of the show. And then now you realize, oh, you just brought up her trauma. Yeah, yeah. And she's, You're bringing up her... I yeah. realize that now. But yeah. back then you'd be like, yeah. like it's just a joke. Like yeah, that's yeah, the way yeah, we looked yeah. at it. Yeah. And now it makes... It's very clear because there are things you could say to me where I'd be like... Eh, By the way, I have the same as you uh, uh, celebration problem. So I... Um, Please tell me. Keep going. So <laughs> like every time I have... Uh, whatever any good news okay hey um new year's eve show new year's eve show was a huge success or like uh you, you got another special you booked a movie um like career like yeah. benchmarks right i'll i'll get it and then i'll be like great and then christina will go like hey so that's a pretty big deal you know like you just got um another special or you just booked this movie or something and I'll be like, yeah, it's great. And she's like, no, we should celebrate. And I'm like, what do you mean? She's like, well, we should like, this is a moment in life that people would celebrate. Yeah. We should celebrate. And I'm like, what do you want to do? And she's like, well, I don't know. But like, don't you think we should like celebrate that you did this thing and this is an accomplishment? And I'll be like completely muted. And I'll just be like, I guess. She's like, aren't you excited about it? I'm like, yeah, I think it's great. She's like, yep. but you know, where's the like the excitement i'm like i don't know i just kind guys of, who haven't been in the end zone before do that shit yeah i guess <laughs> you know yeah i feel like that's so much like what like i every time i've got done shooting a special everyone's wanting to party their balls off and i'm like i don't i don't really feel i'm, I'm thinking i'm just gonna go to bed early i feel good i didn't drink tonight like i like the only time i've really celebrated after a special was after the the philly one um i ended up uh, I, I didn't even do it on purpose. Leanne bought a bunch of shit and got a bunch of joints. And like my cousins were there and she was like, made sure 
that I partied because every other special after that, I've done it and then been like. Did I tell you I'm, br- I'm bringing more guests on tour this year? What do you mean? I'm just going to bring people that I like on tour. I don't understand what you're saying. Like, I actually feel like I want to be around more people that I enjoy the company of. Uh-huh. And that I don't do it. Like, I did it on tour a few times last year. So give me, I, like, explain to me, like, who? Like, I brought out a neighbor of mine and a friend of mine who's not a comic or Oh, anything. just to be on tour with you? Just to... Yes. Oh, and I my go, God. That's I, fucking brilliant, And Tom. every time I did it, I was like, this is the best. Because... So you'd bring someone just like a friend? Just to come hang out. And then they're on tour with you. They're, like, having the best time. And you're just like... Yeah, like I bought you a flight and a hotel, and hey, uh, and and also, you bring people who you truly enjoy. So you're like, I'm going to the gym. Do you want to come? Sure. I'm going to get coffee. Yeah, and they're they're not like a burden, you know. That you want them there. Then it's like we go to the show. You get off stage, and there's your friend. And I'm like, this is the best. So I'm I'm planning on doing that. That is all tour. I've never heard of that in my life, and that is one of the most brilliant. It's fun. That's one of the most brilliant. Bri- oh my god. It's almost I've like... I've already invited people. Like, I'm, I was like... You already know your tour dates? Well, I have some, but I go like... Just for... I knew you are talking about theaters or just yeah. clubs too? No, no, not clubs. No, I can't do clubs. No. Theaters. And I'm I like... way too much of going, hey man, yeah, you, yeah. Gotta, you, you gotta make sure you tip her 20 bucks. Like, <laughs> yeah, oh, fuck, yeah, fuck. Geez. Never mind. Not the clubs. But in the theaters, it's like... It's oh, a whole different game. fucking brilliant. And I, I think it's actually better like for my own well-being. I end up having... I end up enjoying the time more by hanging out with people I enjoy. And then it's like, and then you get, you get to go like, hey, show's over. Let's go to dinner. And it's, you're going with your friend, you know? Uh, I'm definitely doing that. That is the, that is the most brilliant idea. I've, that is can, the best original idea I've ever heard. And I like, you can coordinate it where you go like, I got my California friends, you know, like coming. And then oh you go, you call your high school friend and you go, hey, I'm doing this run. Uh, you're coming. And then, you know what I mean? Your college friends, whatever. So you're, you're constantly just around the people you want to be around. Oh, I'm doing this for every every place I'm going. I'm calling up a friend. Yeah. And going, hey, you want to come on tour with me? Yes, it's the best. Oh, Tom, that is so fucking genius. Because you know, I, my personality in that is I will I will have a better time making sure they have a great time. Exactly. But, but ultimately, what does that do? That makes you happy because it feels good to make sure somebody that you care about is having a good time, right? It's like, it's like, the best part about like giving a gift, right? You, you oh. get a gift, you give it to someone, you don't realize that the thrill is really for the gift giver. You think it's like the person receiving the gift, but it's really the, the thrill of giving the gift. And it's the same thing when you bring your, your friend from Tampa on the road and you show them, the, you'll leave there being like, that felt so good to show my friend a good time. You know? That is, that is uh, I will be bringing friends on every single one of my tours. It's the best. Because I'm already comfortable everyone living in a tour bus. Yeah. And 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 how much fun will everyone else have? And then you have your one from I have a friend who's like, so like what kind of shit do I get hooked up with? I'm like, what? He's like, I mean oh, like I do so much of that hookup shit. Everything too. free. And you're like, yeah, I will pay for it. He's like, I mean, I want to see some like baller shit. And you're like, Jesus <laughs> Christ, why why are we even <laughs> I took the girls with me when we got uh Mac our 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 new bull mastiff yeah i brought the girls with me on tour to go to uh i know we know it's not an ad read um <laughs> uh, fucking wrap it up yeah, wrap yeah, it up yeah, yeah yeah i got a fucking meeting <laughs> so um i took the girls with me to arizona yeah and i put them on the bus and we all get on the bus we have like nine guys on the bus and then george and isla and uh the excitement they had in their eyes of like getting in their bunks and and like pulling into our first, like, you know, you get outside of LA and then everyone's like, well, we got to go to a gas station. We're all boozing. And George and Isla like walk up from the back and they're like, hey, uh, is, is it okay if we go into the gas station? And I'm like, are you kidding me? This is the greatest part of the trip. What do you guys want? We get to buy whatever the fuck we want at a gas station. And they're like, let's get canes. And you're like, oh, we're definitely getting canes. Like we just bought so much candy and yeah. food. And then Leanne wakes up the next morning. She goes, who bought fucking That's, every box of donuts? But the most fun thing is, is like, when you're on a bus and you have a friend who doesn't tour and you stop at like a flying J, you know, truck stop and you're like, let's buy glitter hats and fucking <laughs> tasers. Yeah. We played taser tag. And then, yeah. Oh, I, I am already. Can I tell you what I'm doing when I get done this and we get in the car? I get in the car. 
I'm calling up everyone to go on tour with me. Yeah. I'm telling you, it's, it, it changed. Like I did it on a few weekends last tour and every time I did it, I was so happy that I did it. And then I was like, what this time with this time off, Wait, I'm I want to like, go, I, I want to go on one of your often. tour dates and pretend I've never done stand up. I'll be the character that's never done stand up, and I'll be like, "So wait, wait, what is this?" And, you, <laughs> and the whole time you gotta pretend that I don't know. I'll be like, it's a fucking sound check, idiot. Hey, speaking of friends, I've got to say, Ryan Sickler's podcast is so fucking good. It's great. He is such a great interviewer. I listened to him and Felipe yesterday uh -huh. with Leanne, like just randomly, because I guess Felipe is going through some 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 stuff with his, you know. His, his daughter's not doing so well. I did not know that. It's pretty. It was a, it, but it was a, an amazing interview. I just started listening because I saw the, you know, the the caption and I was like, oh shit, what's going on with Felipe's daughter? And then I started listening from the beginning. It, the, what's great about this podcast, which made me think my podcast is shit, he gets right into it. He gets right into yeah. it. Yeah. And uh, he's such a he's such a natural like. He's a great interviewer, storyteller, and interviewer. Yeah. And he's really engaged and. It was like his, I know he didn't do much of a pre-interview because I like, I'm, I'm just, but it was such a great fucking interview that I'm sitting here going, God damn it, man. He did a great job. Yeah. I had to go. Honeydew. It's, it's, he's, he's so funny and so like endearing, you know, as a, as a host, like you just want, you want to hang out with him. You want to make him laugh. You want to spend time with him. He was, I, that was so good. And I was like, God, I got to do the honeydew, but I got to wait until fucking coronavirus numbers are fucking lower um shout out to aka alpha kappa alpha first uh female vice president yeah as a member of alpha kappa alpha out of howard university did not know that alpha kappa alpha that's Ka kamala harris's uh how did, sorority. You, how did you know that um of course you would know i that. knew that because i because i think through red grant i think because okay. red is real still very big with his greek family him and uh finesse mitchell are still very big with like the, Greek life. Really? And yeah, and I think I saw a post one of them must have put up or someone put up about she is. Kamala Harris being uh, an, a, an Alpha Kappa Alpha. And here's what I think is cool about that is that being in a fraternity, yeah. you know how often white fraternities, white male fraternities have touted presidents sure. as members of their fraternity. Yeah, put, in, put in popular male... Um, Popular president fraternity or something for fraternity president, not fraternity president is going to come up. American president fraternity in fraternities. Yeah. yeah, there we go. He'll figure it out. 85% have been in fraternities. That's of all justices of the Supreme Court. Oh, have been members of fraternities. U.S. presidents since World War II have been initiated into fraternities. Uh, George W. Bush, H. W. Bush, Bill Clinton, Ronald Reagan, Gerald Ford, Franklin Roosevelt. And so it's it's such an interesting fact of things you've seen in white male fraternities that I think I think anyone that's Greek really gets a kick out of the fact that Alpha Cap Alpha has the first female vice president. Yeah. Especially, I mean, obviously, first female vice vice president, but more importantly that she's a woman of color, I think it's just fucking badass. Yeah, I always forget that you were in a fraternity and then I'm like, oh yeah, of course. I bought Leanne and I um fraternity uh letters for for Christmas. What do you I mean? I brought an ATO sweatshirt and I bought her a KD sweatshirt. She was like, the fuck when the fuck am I gonna wear a KD sweatshirt? She's like, I'm fifty, Bert. And I was like, Yeah, throw it on. You like it? <laughs> yeah, you look like a sorority mom. Yeah. <laughs> She's older than a sorority mom. I'm fucking older than a sorority mom lady. <laughs> She's in a different fucking vaccine group than I am. <laughs> <laughs> She's gonna get vaccinated with the old people and come home. I'm arm sore. <laughs> oh my god. Oh, that was a good episode. That was. Thank you guys for watching. Thank you for listening. Livestream.ymhstudios.com for the tickets for the big game, February seventh. Bert gonna, Kreischer, myself, and Warren Sapp. I'm gonna tell you, I'm no slight on the men working in the in the booth this week. Yeah, I miss. Nadav's laugh. Nadav's laugh, yeah. I miss it. A lot of people don't know. Nadav is no longer with us. It uh I yeah, I was I I miss him. So yeah. Nadav, if you're watching this, uh I hope you're laughing by yourself in Jerusalem. Up there. Um also, more importantly, store.ymhstudios.com has all the merch, uh the oh, air segura yeah. stuff. 
flew off the shelves. I have reached out about, because I got so many messages about the New Era hats, um, the ones that, that went. And I, I told them I would place a massive order. But everyone hit me up about those hats. I told like, him I would place a huge order, but last time we got delayed nine or 10 months on the order or something like that. I'm like, is it going to be that long? We can't wait that long. So we'll see. Um, all right. That's it. That's Thanks it. for listening. Thanks for watching. Love you, buddy. Love you too, buddy. Bert and Tom, Tom and Bert. One goes topless while the other wears a shirt. Tom tells stories and Bert's the machine. There's not a chance in hell that they'll keep it clean. Here's what we call Two Bears on Cave. No scripts, a bit of booze, amateur fartology. Dirty jokes, raunchy humor, no apologies. Here's what we call Two Bears on Cave.